最大震度6強もの福島県と宮城県で最大震度6強の非常を観測し各地で停電も発生しました位置を再び襲った大きな地震崩れ落ちてしまって宮城県柴田町の JR 船岡駅では石尾橋内の市営住宅です県県内では石の町市などで住宅のブロックで JNN に調べてまで土砂災害などに警告一夜明け被害の状況も悪く流れた土砂は数百メートル閉まれた建物もあり、骨口があらわになっています。これた日や真横を向いた中、勢いよく土砂が崩れたか。Thirtieth February, twenty twenty-one. A big earthquake measuring magnitude seven point three struck Japan off the coast of Fukushima and Sendai. Around the same spot as the Great Tohoku earthquake of 2011, measuring magnitude 1.0. We'll be looking in this special episode the damages caused by this earthquake and also some of the technology of how Japanese civil engineering、uh, prepares infrastructure and building, and also how Japanese people prepare for these earthquakes. And so come join us. 今回の地震は関東にも大きな影響を及ぼしました一時およそ86万件が停電しました When the earthquake struck, at the time it was about midnight, just before Valentine's Day, the 14th. Fortunately, there was night at Japan and many people were asleep or away from major trunk roads and infrastructures. However, the damage was quite severe. A lot of news agencies around the world probably didn't show exactly the extent of the damage caused by this earthquake. Now, looking at these news reports here, you can see just how much damage that this earthquake caused by shifting a lot of ground、uh, in houses, in shops,、um, in infrastructure such as train stations.、Uh, the shaking、uh, measured in the Japanese、uh, measurement scale. Of Shindo, which is actually how it feels,、uh, was really severe, knocking down a lot of items in the house that normally wouldn't fall down、uh, in earthquakes unless it was over a certain intensity. Glasses, bottles,、uh, just about everything, all kinds of furniture、uh, was shaking. And you can see in news reports here、uh, the office, which always has the camera fixed in,、uh, shook violently with the, the television screens falling off in stations. The ceilings, the walls crack, and water is pouring out of the ceiling. And the road geysers were caused by bursting water pipes. And this also caused a lot of blackouts throughout the city and nearby regions in Tokyo and Yokohama.、Now、the power grids、uh, operate in such a way that、uh, not one area is concentrated for certain、uh, power flows. So this affected for several hours、uh, areas far away from the epicenter.、Uh, blackouts which caused the traffic lights to go. Uh, out and traffic was not being able to go very smoothly, and worst of all, it caused、um, heavy landslides, which is always the danger of earthquakes,、um, covering the expressway and also caused huge damage to Ebisu Circuit. And this is something that、um, JDM fans and car enthusiasts around the world、um, actually did get news of and were very concerned about、uh, what has actually happened to、uh, this circuit. But we're going to be looking also at the damage caused around the area and how this has affected people's lives and with the damages that were caused by such kind of earthquakes and how these aftershocks actually happened. So let's take a look at the location first of all. This is the Atlas of Japan, and in English, conveniently, and this is the East Coast, the Pacific side. Here is Fukushima. And this is Sendai. Now,、oh, the earthquake that happened on the 13th was somewhere around here. Now, this is actually、uh, not too far away from the nuclear power plants of Fukushima. Now, the earthquake that happened 10 years ago was further out into the sea, about 60 kilometers away. However, unlike the 2011 earthquake,、uh, there w a s no tsunamis.、Um, 
generated and there was no alarm for that. And the reason is that the depth of the earthquake uh, also affected uh, where the tsunamis are generated. Now in the 2011 earthquake, uh, the depth was actually very shallow, 24 kilometers. Now that's quite a lot uh, because below the sea floor, but it's shallow enough that it actually displaced a lot of water, uh, mass volumes of water that rushed inland and causing huge damage, actually much more than the earthquake itself. So let's look at the structure of how tsunamis are a real danger to any kind of earthquakes around the world, whether it's in California or not. Japan happens to be right in the center of uh, one of the most destructive uh, geological areas on Earth. It's called the Pacific Ring of Fire. It covers a vast a ring from uh, Japan going up to Alaska, uh, North America going down to South America, and also on the other side, uh, near Philippines. And this is where a lot of the earthquakes happen. Now, Japan is a small island, comparatively, uh, made up of 70% land mass, uh, which most of it actually from volcanoes. Now, to understand why earthquakes happen, we're going to be taking a little look at geography and also geology. The Earth's crust, uh, as you'll probably know from science, is made up of different uh, layers of the rock and minerals, and this is actually called the lithosphere. Measuring about 200 kilometers long, the Earth's crust, which is going to be illustrated for you, here very simply. Let's say this is the Earth's surface, and you have mountains, and here would be the sea, like that. And this crust, and below that is all uh, softer, much hotter uh, sort of materials, uh, which actually is much hotter than the Earth's crust area here. So as these things move, it causes a lot of convection rising up into uh, the harder surface and this causes uh, things to shake. Now, when an earthquake happens at a very shallow point at around here, it actually displaces a lot of water moving it inland. The last week's earthquake was actually at a deeper part, just for reference, just a much deeper part at 60 kilometers. So this is the reason why um, it didn't cause a tsunami. So, very fortunately, the earthquake didn't cause any casualties at all. Only 150 people were injured, of course it happened uh, during the night, and uh, although a lot of property was damaged um, due to the mass shaking, and even some people who felt the 2011 earthquake said that this time uh, the shaking actually seemed more violent. So. This is also why the Japanese uh, government and the scientists have developed a system uh, that's different from the magnitude of the Richter scale for measuring earthquakes. It's called Shindo, which translates into a kind of a feeling, uh, measuring from scales one to six of intensity. Uh, the Japanese uh, weather and meteorological uh, agency actually gives an area, as you can see here, uh, immediately when an earthquake happens, uh, depending on how it is felt through various sensors and machines are located around uh, the different cities and different prefectures. This gives people an idea of uh, what are the kind of feeling that they will be getting and what kind of damages that it could cause. It's also more realistic feeling rather than a more scientific look at the earthquake. Of course, uh, they still use the magnitude system which uh, can give scientists a very clear idea on what Kind of damages would actually happen. Now, interestingly, this earthquake was considered an aftershock of the 2011 earthquake. Now, if you look at geology, there are different different types of earthquakes. Now, as I said, the Earth's crust is made up of different different layers. Now, there are different types of earthquakes, and the one that we're interested in um, is the subduction type, which is the most common type of earthquakes that happen in Japan. So, the one reason why uh, Japan is located in the Ring of Fire, it is actually caught between different plates. Now, what are plates? Uh, these are geological theories um, that scientists have used to determine uh, the different areas of, that separate the Earth's crust, and they are subdivided into 
uh, different areas with fault lines, which is basically like saying the actual surface is broken into different pieces. And these pieces are always moving against each other or apart from each other. And sometimes um, one is trying to go down under one the other. And as explained earlier on, uh, because the upper cup of the crust is hard and the lower part is very soft with a lot of heat, it moves uh, everything uh, in different directions. And this happens through scale of over years and thousands or hundreds of years. And we only feel it maybe once every um, couple of years. But in fact, Japan has earthquakes almost every other day. Um, some of these are too small to be measured or, be, or felt uh, by, by humans uh, living on the surface, but they're caught by sensors. And this gives you know, geologists and seismologists a very good idea of what these can do. And um, also Japan has the world's most advanced uh, early earthquake warning system. In fact, uh, when an earthquake goes off, uh, our, our cell phones, our mobile phones actually uh, sound an alarm and this gives a signal to people to immediately be prepared, um, maybe take cover. Uh, you shouldn't go out of your house actually, maybe go inside a very small cubicle uh, such as a toilet or if best if you have a big table, uh, go underneath that if anything does fall. And these are drills that actually people uh, enjoy practice uh, when they're in elementary school since young. Um, Big officers have hard hats and helmets and everyone's trained in, in the earthquake drill and to be very, very prepared. Um, even the technology of houses and buildings, which we're going to be taking a look later, um, has been developed from Japan being very prone to earthquakes and uh, engineers have devised many different ways how they can actually reduce the uh, damage and effects of seismic activity. So, most interestingly is that uh, this was actually an aftershock. Now, scientists have explained that uh, because the earthquake that happened in 2011 of uh, subduction zone type, so I'm going to draw it for you. So, here we have one part of the plate side view and the crust going like this. So this is one of the plates and the other one is actually here. Now, when these two plates try to move against each other, subduction means it goes underneath a vibration or um, an, a fault activity actually occurs. Now this comes as waves, uh, which is what earthquakes are measured by. Everything is moving, but there's always an epicenter, which is the uh, propagation point or the center point um, geographically looking from top down. But what we're interested in is also the, uh, the depth. Uh, and this also determines whether, uh, as I explained earlier, tsunamis will be generated or not. So. The earthquake that happened in uh, 2011 was classified as a mega earthquake, um, probably the worst one to happen in Japanese history, measuring magnitude 9.0. Uh, in the history of recorded earthquakes, there have only been maybe two or three uh, of these major earthquakes. And major earthquakes that have dismayed a lot of property destruction in Japan are not the first one. Before the 2011, there was the Kobe earthquake in uh, 1995, which destroyed um, most of the cities. No tsunamis were created, but um, the highways actually collapsed and it caused massive uh, destruction to uh, buildings and uh, actually half toppled down. And uh, given going years back before the World War II, uh, the, the Great Kanto Earthquake, uh, 1923, that was uh, occurred in the middle of the day and when people were having open fires outside and it caused huge fires. So all these lessons learned from history uh, made the Japanese government quite prepared, but not as well prepared for tsunamis as uh, 2011. This earthquake this time, uh, as scientists explain, is actually an aftershock, which means uh, it's very strange that it occurs 10 years after, but uh, 10 years after is actually not very uncommon for earthquakes of mega size, um, especially measuring this, uh, of such a huge magnitude. It takes years for it to actually sort of wean off. And uh, as time passes, it gets lower and lower and lower. Some of these uh, aftershocks can happen as kind of a post activity uh, from uh, a major shock. Now, just to understand how m impactful that the uh, 2011 Tohoku earthquake caused and why these aftershocks are still occurring 10 years after. Uh, we're going to look at some uh, facts that scientists have collected. The shock was so great that the entire island of Japan has actually moved a couple of meters. 
um, eastwards closer to America. It also caused a, a few centimeters of tilt on the Earth's axis, which means the Earth, which is floating like this, has actually moved a little bit, uh, which has also in turn caused a few milliseconds in Earth's road, the rotation of the Earth causing um, time to be actually shorter per day. Now, that's a really, really huge uh, impact uh, on the very Earth we live in. This is so great that it made um, the Earth's crust on that area move um, by all the fault line and quite quite a huge um, area and this created a secondary massive ground activities which made aftershocks come later and later so it's interesting to see that uh, aftershocks uh, are still happening even though a major earthquake has passed now, it's very interesting to see that even though 10 years after a major earthquake uh, the aftershocks are still happening most of these activities are actually uh, being recorded by the scientists uh, to study uh, when and the next earthquake might actually come. Now, to make matters worse, um, scientists have long prophesied or rather predicted that the next major earthquake that might strike Japan is the Tokai earthquake, uh, which was supposed to have come between 10 years ago and now, but probably that came in the form of the Tohoku earthquake, we don't know. Now, what's interesting is that the aftershock this time measured in quite a high uh, magnitude uh, and scientists have actually warned that more earthquakes uh, or aftershocks would come and in fact uh, just two days later uh, another aftershock uh, happened in the south near Kobe and just two or three days ago on the 20th uh, one happened in Hokkaido. Now that area actually gets a lot of movement but the Jap Japanese people are very well prepared for such things and the infrastructure of uh, buildings is something that has been in development uh, for over 30 of the years. Now let's look at this little short uh, video clip where you can see the huge buildings uh, actually have massive rubber dampers uh, at the base, at the core. So when earthquakes happen and the movement actually moves underneath the building, uh, rubber absorbs all of the impact. Uh, and stabilizing the movements of the building on top so it reduces the shaking. Now if you're at a higher position of course you're going to feel more of the pendulum movement uh, making shaking very very severe. Another special technology as you can see here is a special uh, rotation device uh, with special plates that can move in any direction uh, absorbing the movements of the earth up or down. Uh, in houses uh, mostly made of wood in Japan such kind of structures are also being uh, used when the most important is actually in the walls where a cross beam uh, very much like a strut brace on a car uh, has been used to hold and uh, the integrity of the structure uh, better rather than having only four square corners like so forces move uh, the house and rock and back and forth uh, it would actually make it collapse and the measures that Japanese uh, do take uh, in the house is actually to secure all of their furniture such as tall bookshelves or, or cabinets uh, with a bracket to the wall so that it doesn't fall down and uh, everyone in the house has an emergency pack um, in, with filled with uh, all kinds of uh, lifeline uh, equipment and supplies uh, such as dried food, uh, extra water, uh, warming towel or, or a blanket, a uh, radio because when electricity is cut due to uh, damage to power supply um, you can't watch your TV and maybe uh, these days it's also interesting to use a, a power generator with a huge battery pack and uh, some people even have these kits and put it in their car so if they are outside uh, they can take refuge um, outside very easily and Japanese kids are also trained right from primary school uh, or elementary school uh, how to deal with earthquakes and the best thing you should do when an earthquake comes is to run and hide underneath uh, a structure such as a big table or uh, the more small and tight place which is usually the toilet uh, in the house. Do not run out of your house because things from outside such as falling windows or awnings on the roof can actually fall. You're actually safer inside the house. Uh, move away maybe from large uh, structures uh, like your furniture or 
uh, any kind of glass cabinet which has uh, pots or plates or glasses, I don't want it to fall on you. Uh, maybe the bedroom will be the safest because you don't have much uh, things inside. But it's always best to remain calm and understand that the earthquake is happening and that you should move to a, a safe area. Now, of course, if you do come to Japan, uh, it's probably going to affect you or uh, shock you the first time if you do sense some kind of shaking. Is it safe for you to come to Japan? Uh, yes, it is, because these actually don't happen very, very often. I've been in Japan for 15 over years, and the three most biggest earthquakes uh, are the ones that happened last time, the 2011, and there's one more, uh, which really made a huge movement. But other than that, in the Tokyo, Yokohama area, uh, most earthquakes would last only a few seconds. The earthquake that happened on the 13th actually lasted 15 seconds, which was pale in comparison to six minutes uh, that happened in the Tokyo earthquake. Uh, it was very distressing, of course, uh, because I could feel that uh, it wasn't normal, uh, due to the slow uh, shaking rather than fast shaking types and this really affected the uh, my ability to actually think properly uh, taking the shock but I was actually calm enough to be able to think about the next thing to do I looked around my house and see okay uh, are these guys falling if, if the earthquake is big enough to make all these things fall then uh, it's probably time to take evasive action so uh, personally I do put around my house things that are in varying degrees uh, easy to be toppled so I could actually uh, gauge whether uh, the earthquake is really strong or not. I also live on the first floor which actually helps a lot but um, still you know even though I wasn't very very uh, surprised by it there was still a little bit of sense of um, worriness because what if this actually turns out to be a, a huge earthquake like, like more than 10 years ago. Um, my girlfriend who is Japanese uh, was really really very calm and she said oh yeah this happens all the time and that's to the extent of how a lot of Japanese are actually very well prepared uh, for for earthquakes. So in closing um, for those of you who think well Japan is uh, disaster ridden uh, you've got typhoons yes it's true uh, but there's so much here to enjoy that you wouldn't want to miss uh, like the beautiful Mount, uh, view of Mount Fuji, uh, the beautiful nature, um, the food and all the iconic places especially if you like JDM cars and, and, and all the different locations the culture uh, just makes it worthwhile uh, to visit but if something does happen um, take this guide to prepare yourself for what to do so until next time guys peace out